I picked up six new lightweight travel backpacks, all under 1.8 pounds or about eight kilograms. I'll be testing these bags out over the next several months, but the first one I wanted to share with you is one of my favorites. This is the 32 liter Patagonia Black Hole Pack. This bag shares some features with the Black Hole Duffel, except it has a large top opening compartment and it's more comfortable to carry as a backpack. The Black Hole Pack comes in two sizes. This is the largest 32 liter size and it also comes in a smaller 25 liter version. The dimensions on both packs are gonna work easily as a carry-on on most airlines. The dimensions are gonna really depend on how full you pack this thing because it's pretty soft. The way I have it packed here, it's about 21 inches tall by 12 inches wide by about eight and a half inches deep. And I don't have it, but according to the website, the dimensions on the 25 liter pack, the length and the width are almost identical to this 32 liter pack with the main difference in capacity coming from a slightly thicker depth on the larger size. However, the height on both packs is gonna be about 22 inches tall or 56 centimeters when fully packed, which is gonna make it too tall to work as a personal item. The black hole fabric is one of my favorites. It's thick, durable, waterproof. The TPU coating does make it a little bit shiny, but it's more flexible than other fabrics with a similar coating. However, just because the fabric is waterproof doesn't mean the bag is. I did a couple tests with this to see how well it kept out water. I took it paddle boarding. I also set it outside under a sprinkler for about an hour. I found it to be relatively water resistant. The water doesn't get in unless you get the bag really wet. It's gonna hold up well to light rains, but because the seams and the zippers aren't sealed, this thing will eventually start to leak. The hardware in Patagonia bags is always solid. This bag has four exterior zippered compartments, all with large YKK zippers. They also use high quality Duraflex brand for the adjusters and the buckles. None of the zippers are lockable, even the ones on the laptop compartment. However, these holes on the zipper pulls are plenty large enough to lock them together with either a TSA lock or one of these little locking carabiners. The main pocket in the black hole pack is gonna open from the top and the majority of the volume on this pack is gonna come from this main compartment, which makes this bag work great for either a travel pack or a hiking pack. And in addition to that main compartment, there's a few exterior pockets, a large front slash pocket, a mini top brain pocket, rear laptop compartment, and two side water bottle pockets. This top brain pocket has a decent capacity, takes up most of the space on the top of the pack. See, I have a bunch of electronics in here. Goes pretty far back, I'd say capacity, maybe three liters, around the same size as this Night Eyes toiletry bag. This front slash pocket is large and thin, goes from about here to here, side opening zipper, and you can see, although this pocket is thin, it does have this gusseted seam on the side, popping the bag out max, maybe two inches from the bag, allowing you to fit quite a bit of gear in here. Now looking at the water bottle pockets, there's two of these things made from this thin, stretchy mesh material, decently large, and easily fit a skinny water bottle in here. This thing holds your gear pretty tight in here, does feel a little bit loose towards the bottom. However, never had anything fall out. I wouldn't mind if this thing was just a little bit taller though. These things are nice and wide though, so you can fit a lot of stuff in these pockets in addition to just a water bottle. For example, you can easily stuff something like a pair of sandals in here or anything else you wanna store on the outside of the bag. The laptop compartment on the black hole pack I think is a good compromise between protection and weight. It's located in the back of the bag behind the backpack straps, which you'll have to fold out of the way to open this thing. It's got one large zipper that fully opens and lays flat. On the back here, there's two sleeves. There's this larger one that can hold up to a 15 inch laptop. And then there's another small sleeve in here for an e-reader or a tablet. This thing is decently padded. There's a thin foam pad on the tablet sleeve, another one on the laptop sleeve, and then this back padding here is quite thick, which doubles as the padding in the back of the backpack. You can also see here the bottom of the laptop sleeve ends where the seam is. So there's about an inch of false bottom here, which is gonna keep your laptop off from touching the ground when you set the pack down. 
And because this bag can also be used as a hiking backpack, it's hydration compatible. Instead of a laptop, you can put a hydration bladder in here. There's a little hole here on the top that's gonna pop out for your hose. And then two little straps each on the shoulder straps for securing the water hose. The carry system on the black hole pack is fairly simple. Two backpack shoulder carry straps that are not stowable, thick back padding, but there is no hip belt. The shoulder straps are consistent with what I see in other Patagonia packs. It's a simple, moderately wide, moderately padded shoulder strap with a nice curve and an adjustable sternum strap. And I'll show you what this bag looks like on me a little bit later in the video when I pack it up full of gear. The 32 liter size here is right on the edge of where you might need a hip belt. It's still a small bag, but it can get fairly heavy if you have this thing loaded up. And it would be nice if they had at least an option for attaching an aftermarket hip belt. Some options that I've seen work really well for this. This wandered pack here has little loops on the side, so you can actually just clip a hip belt on, take it on or off as you need it. This Thule Ion pack here has a little pass-through sleeve that goes through, and they actually sell a separate hip pack that you put through here that can double as a hip belt. The black hole pack, however, doesn't have either of these options, so there's really no way to attach an aftermarket hip belt to this pack. The back padding on the black hole pack is thick enough to be comfortable. Almost anything you put in the bag, looking from the side, you can see it's quite thick, maybe five eighths of an inch thick foam padding. And then there's an additional thinner breathable mesh pad here on the back, the top and the bottom. The back, however, is pretty flat and there's really not a whole lot of air ventilation. One of the things I like about this bag is that they don't waste space or weight on too many unnecessary features. The opening on this thing is from the top, it slants down, angles across the bag, and ends not quite halfway down the pack. That means that you can peel this lid back and still have access to all your gear in the bottom of the bag, but it's not so open that your gear is gonna fall off the top. Now I'll pack the bag up real quick so you can see how much gear you can fit in the black hole pack. I tend to like packing cubes. This medium Eagle Creek compression cube works great. This thing easily fits in the bottom of the pack. If you had more clothes, you could also stack two on top of there very easily. And then there's gonna be enough room on the side over here for a couple of thinner items like a minimalist toiletry kit and some other gear like a little travel towel. And the way this top brain pocket works is there's a little fabric flap in here. So the more you pack on the inside, the less space you're gonna have in the brain pocket and vice versa. So I still have a little bit of room here in the top. I could pack more in here, but I wanna save some space in the brain pocket for my electronics. So I'm just gonna pack a fleece. So now you can see the top of this bag is still fairly empty and there's plenty of room in here for all my minimalist electronics. And I'm gonna put an e-reader in the tablet sleeve in the back. I have a pair of sandals on this side and a water bottle on the other side. This is what that bag looks like, fully packed. Not too heavy, because I don't have a lot of heavy electronics in here, like a laptop. It's about 12 pounds or five and a half kilograms. This is the bag fully packed on me, taking it on a couple of short trips. Shoulder straps feel good, back padding feels good on my back. It's decently comfortable for the weight that I have on here. It would be nice though if they had the hip belt option if you're carrying around more weight in this pack. In summary, I like the Patagonia Black Hole Pack for its simplicity. It has a decent carry system, a large interior main compartment, but also a few other exterior pockets for smaller gear. The biggest con right now is the availability on this pack. There's a wait list on the Patagonia website and it might take you three to four weeks to get your hands on one of these. The aesthetic on this bag is also largely a matter of personal preference. It does look a lot like a hiking backpack. And not everyone is gonna like this shiny TPU coated black hole fabric. I also wish there was a hip belt option, especially on this larger 32 liter version of the pack. I hope you like this review on the Patagonia black hole pack 32 liter. Hope you stick around. I have a bunch of packs, minimalist packs I'm testing out. They're all well under two pounds. ULA, MEC, Cabin Max, Cabin Met. So I'll be sharing those with you over the next couple of months. So hope you stick around for those. And again, thanks for watching.